Um, so cyclic and immune it. Um, I, I, I put these two together just because they're generally the same model and there's just like one difference that makes mutant a little bit more interesting to me, but maybe not for you. Um, so cyclic and immune it, what it does, <laughs> I like to describe it as picks the picks, but weirder. Um, it matches unpaired images and generalizes their translation. Um, and the unpaired is the most important part. That's what differentiates it from picks to picks. Um, the papers for Cyclogan and Munit are here. There are also two repos. Um, what you've installed when you run in the install uh, script that I have set up and showed you earlier in class, that installs Munit. Um, if you want Cyclogan, I th it actually might install Cyclogan too. I'll take a look. But if, anyway, if you really want Cyclogan, um, I can show you how to install that as well. Um, horses to zebras is like the thing that everyone knows about Cyclegan. These are actually images from the data set that they uh, produced. Um, so what I think is really interesting is like, I wouldn't necessarily describe these as like the best images of zebras. Like this one's pretty blurry. This one has a human in it. Like I don't, I don't know what's going on. Like the zebra isn't even really in this photo. Um, and yet the model still works. So even with images that look like this, um, it, Cyclegan somehow learns how to correlate them together. Um, and that's pretty amazing. Um, all, one thing I also want to note is like all of the images in this data set are square, but for Cyclegan or Munit, you don't need the same size images for everything. Um, so you could have some horizontal images for, uh, of horses, some vertical images of horses, and they don't even need to be the same size, um, which is pretty nice. That means you can be a little bit more flexible with your data set. Um, unlike StyleGAN, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, but it's just something worth noting is that even though this data set's all square, it doesn't need to be going forward. Um, so similar to pix to pix the training data for this is two folders. So one folder is a set of images called A, that would be like horses. And the other is a, set of fol uh, a folder of set of images that we call B, and that is zebras um, in this case. And so what you get with Cyclegan or Munit in this case is once you've trained it, so let's say you've trained it on, the, on all, this, on all these pieces of data, when you test it, you then give it another single image. So you might give it a horse image it's never seen before, or you might give it a zebra image. And depending on the direction you're saying is like, are you saying, I wanna convert the zebra to a horse? Or I wanna convert this horse to a zebra. Um, the difference between Cyclegan and Munit is in the output. So Cyclegan produces one image, and it only ever produces one image from an input. So if I were to feed it the same image of a horse, it would always produce the exact same zebra output. Unlike Munit, which Munit actually produces multiple versions of the same image. Um, do I have an example of that here? I do not. Um, I think I showed it last week where it's basically the same translation, but the colors shift a little bit or the textures shift a little bit. But what's nice about that is like you get multiple versions of, of a similar image and then you can sort of say like, oh, I like this, I like this version or I like this version. Um, what's, what's annoying is that Munich calls those multiple images styles. So we have style transfer, style GAN, and then Munich styles. Uh, and that will be very, very confusing to describe. So if you want to talk about styles with Munich, talk about Munich, and then we can then use the word styles and then it makes a little bit more sense. Um, I think I showed this last week. This is uh, ramen to faces and faces to ramen. So again, that A to B and that B to, B to A direction is really apparent here, right? So this is ramen to faces and then back to ramen. And this is faces to ramen, back to faces. Um, and you'll see that like the last version always gets a little blurry. And that's that generalization that we talk about, right? So this isn't like the perfect representation of this image. It is a generalization of this. And that's what it's trying to learn. 